How you doing? Well, here we go with video number seven of uh, whatever this is that we're doing today. Anyway, uh, I got a few things I want to talk about today. Um, one of the things <laughs> that I'm talking about uh, uh, is um, watching myself on video. And this is for me novel. I've never seen myself on camera. I'm not a camera person. Those of you who know me know that I don't do photographs uh, for very good reason. I mean, I have uh, a face for perfect for radio, but um, I'm not a big... I take pictures. I don't have pictures taken of me. So watching myself on video, and I'm thinking to myself, thousands of students, they had to listen to this and look at this every day, like for hours and hours and hours. How did you do it? I couldn't do it. I get bored. I'd sleep. Um, but I, you did it, and I thank you. And uh, I thank you for all the comments. Some really nice comments coming by, and um, uh, all the the good uh, wishes and ideas, and reminding me of stories of long ago. Um, I'm going to use them. I am going to use them. But I want to run through a list of things like um, topics, yearbooks. I. Um, I have the whole set, and even I've even got this one, which is 84, 85. It was the second year I was at the school. Um, I, um, I even have the one before that, which is really cool. Uh, and I have them right up to, the, the, to when they stopped making them. Um, yearbooks were really weird things. Um, because of the timelines involved in the yearbook, everything in the yearbook was probably mid, early to mid first semester. So nothing that happened second semester, plays, dramas, this, that, the other, really ever made it in unless by fluke or they were able to sneak it in. Um, but most of the pages were first semester, which didn't make it exactly a yearbook, made it a half year book. Um, but uh, it, it, I collected them all because they contain pictures and comments and I always had students write in my yearbooks and I reread them and I reread them all the time believe it or not um, and I dug out a few um, and I'm using them as a source for some of the material and just to remind myself of what it is I wanted to talk about and one of the things I wanted to talk about is a gentleman who um, went really went underappreciated uh, for the most of the time. People barely noticed the gentleman, um, and yet he was an integral part of keeping the school up and running, and that was the custodian, the head custodian, Tony Charbonneau. Um, I, don't, I can't remember exactly when he retired, but he was there from the opening of the school in 1968, or whenever it was the school opened. And right up until almost the the switch over to Lincoln Alexander in 2000 I don't know if he was there for that but he was amazing at keeping the school in perfect condition and it was it was to him um, more than uh, a job it was it was a destiny it was a, a fulfillment it was a goal it was an um, uh, it, it was a, a, a lifestyle um, he and his wife, his wife Dolores, I believe her name was, she worked in foods, I think, um, and the two of them, he was barely five feet tall. And when I met him, it was later on in his life, and he was a sort of a little chubby guy, um, rushing around the school and fixing things and making sure that him and his team kept that school absolutely in pristine shape. Nobody that followed him, no head custodian that followed him was able to do the same job. He knew every inch of that school. And sometimes fixing things could take a while or they could be instantaneous. Um, for those of you, um, might, most, some of you might remember the 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 door handle leading from the piano room, which was 125, into the mu into the music office, which is one which is between the music the piano room and the music room. Um, the door 
had a chunk of the top, didn't the door, sorry, the handle had a dent in it. And that was Mr. Charbonneau fixing the door handle. I once had the key stuck. That was originally the music room door handle. And the key got stuck in the, in the handle. And I couldn't get it out. He came over and he was armed with a hammer and a screwdriver. And he said, stand back. And he put the screwdriver on the round handle. Okay, so this thing could slip. And boom. And the key came out. Everything was normal. The key went back in and out. Nobody was any worse for the wear. And it left a chunk, a divot, in the door handle. And that was his way of sometimes fixing things. It was like, I fix. Boom. Done. Fix, finished. Um, he and I didn't hit it off, I have to admit, that we were not the best of friends when, we, when I first came to the school because I was young and stupid, uh, mostly. Um, and he was old and wise, and the two sometimes don't match. Um, so between the two of us, we didn't quite hit it off. And soon after, we kind of made up. Actually, he sent me a note, Mr. Kaplan, he spelled my name wrong. So I sent him back a note, Mr. Charbonneau, and I spelled his name wrong. And he went to the principal, and the principal came to me and said, Look, you have to work with this guy. Learn how to spell his name. So I did. We, uh, we kind of buried the hatchet not long afterwards, and um, uh, I, I was actually, <laughs> it's a good thing we did, because I don't know what he would have done with it. Um, but uh, he, uh, I, I came to him one day, and I said, Outside the music room is just a blank wall. It actually was painted and they painted over it and I said I need a showcase something to put the music awards in something to put announcements in whatever and he says no problem I'll I'll be there tomorrow to the next day I come to school and I come to school at 7 30 and there's already a showcase up on the wall now it was a fairly deep showcase and one too many students walked out of the music room, made a left, and walked right into the showcase, um, damaging noses in the process. And he took it down and he narrowed it and put it back up. But that was the kind of guy he was. I mean, it was, you wanted you want, you wanted it when? Okay, boom, done. Wonderful, wonderful man. There was a, at one time, some of you might remember the old library uh, having a bunch of pictures around the top edge of teachers and mostly teachers um the the then principal of the school had his favorites sort of a clique and as a just a note of thanks or whatever or greasing the pot he at the end of the year banquet there would always be one or two pictures of his cronies that would go up on the wall Sometimes they were honest-to-goodness teachers that contributed a lot to the school. Mostly they were his friends. And to have your picture up on the wall was a hoo-ha, but nobody, if you weren't friends of his, you didn't get your picture up on the wall. I would never have gotten my picture up on the wall. Not a chance. Um, but uh, uh, his was up on the wall. And it was an early, early, it wasn't even a painting, it was more of a pastel uh, pencil uh, drawing of him, and really, really well done, too of when he was much younger, probably within the first two, three years the school was open. Uh, 2000, the switch over, the construction and everything, um, those pictures were taken down and buried under the stage, and for years they were buried. I ended up teaching Mr. Charbonneau's grandsons, really nice guys, really sweet guys, and um, the youngest one was graduating, and he came to talk to me. I said, just a second, I think I have something for your grandfather. And we went together under the stage, and I dug out Tony's painting, drawing, portrait, whatever it was. And I gave it to him, and I said, take it home and give it to your grandfather. And at that time, the two of them were living in a, in a retirement home. And he says, okay, I will. And so he did. And I can th honestly think it was the only thing Tony ever received from the school uh, after more than 30 years of putting in hard labor and blood, sweat, and tears into that building. So when I when his grandson came and saw me a few days later, 
I said, well, what did he think? He said, well, he just smiled. Him and his wife just smiled. And I think I made their day. Um, so if I did one nice thing, I did one nice thing in, in my time at the school. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, one thing that uh, that was important uh, to him. Certainly it was important to me. No other head custodian even came close to that kind of... Di- and I learned a lot from him, uh, that kind of diligence. I learned a lot from him. I learned that you have to work with people, even if you can't stand their guts. And there were lots of people at the school that I didn't get along with, most, mostly most of them. Um, and uh, it was a case of you have to work with them at some point because the bottom line is the benefit for the students. That was my goal. That you did what you did, you did what you had to do because the students were the recipients of all those good things and if you didn't work together it would come at a cost and it would come at a cost to the students and that was my goal. And it didn't matter what it took, as much as it took. Um, this is one person that should be remembered. Another person that should be remembered and not a lot of people would even know her, was Mrs. Jean Franz. This is a woman who was head secretary. She became head secretary. She was a secretary at the school and became head secretary. And one of the most wonderful people I have ever met in my life. Um, Jean, when you're a head secretary, you have to work with the staff. And I was... To be honest with you, in my early years, I was impossible to work with. <laughs> Not because I was impossible to work with on my own accord, just because that's just the way I am. Um, but she worked. She had to work with staff. She had to work with the vice principal. She had to work with the principals. And my God, I went through 13 of them. And they went from the ridiculous to the sublime. Um, some were really easy to work with and really, really good. And some principals were very, very tough, and they had it their own way, and blah, 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 blah. And as a head secretary, and then you have to deal with your staff, with your secretaries, and they were their own basket of fruit. Um, Some of them were wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And then they had a couple of temporaries, and I forget what it was. I used to do the announcements. Um, I used to do the announcements at one point. They couldn't get it. So I would do them, and at the end of each announcement, this is many years ago, I would finish it off with some kind of saying or quote or something, and that would be the end of the announcements. And there was one young secretary they hired, and she didn't last very long. I don't know if she knew which end was up and which direction was north. Um, I don't even think she could tell time on a clock. But anyway... um, she was more like, you know, but God bless her. She was, oh, she tried. So at the end of my announcement, she's sitting right next to me. I said, you know, if you drink carrot juice for a hundred years, you'll live a long time. And that, those are your announcements. Have a good day. And as I walked away, I heard her say, I've heard that. Yeah, that's right. And I started laughing. And as I walked out the office door, <laughs> I heard another secretary say to her, You idiot! If you drink anything for a hundred years, you'll live a long time. So, <laughs> sorry. Miss France had to deal with all that. And her handwriting was beyond impeccable. When she wrote you a note, it was like someone had sent something to the calligraphy department of some university and they hand lettered each each letter her handwriting was spectacular um she was very old school in that respect she hand wrote all her notes i don't know i don't think she would do an email um voluntarily when she could write something i at that time we had to pay (laughs) we had to pay for long distance calls so a mine came to three dollars and ninety eight cents or something, so I left her four dollars to pay for the long distance. She sent me back a memo with two pennies taped on this memo, and she wrote down, uh, "Mr. Kaplan, here's your change, Jean France." 
And so that I guess that's how she got her two cents in, I, I guess. I still have it to this day. I still have that memo. I have everything that was on that board in front of me. I've got everything, all the notes, all the pictures, all the comments, all the comic strips, everything. I should dig them out and show you some. Um, but Miss, uh, she, she was, um, she would do all the graduation certificates, for example. Um, and that took a long time to do, and she did them, and the, the handwriting and the effort that she put into everything, it was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And so she's somebody that uh, I believe she's still living in the Malton community, and uh, she's, uh, if you know her and you're friends with her, give her a call and, and, and say hi for me. Um, <laughs> Halloween. Some teachers used to dress up. I mentioned that Mr. Perkins, big, big, tall guy with a beard, got dressed up as a nurse, complete with stockings on his hairy legs, a skirt, a hat, the whole routine. One year, we had a vice principal who was uh, who had a wicked sense of humor. Um, he became principal of Chinkuzi. You might know who he is. Um, he dressed up as a pirate. The patch, the striped uh, shirt, um, the, uh, the the vest, the, the sword, the bandana, a stuffed parrot on his shoulder. You know, the whole routine. But he still had to do vice principal work. And so um, apparently the story goes, I wasn't there for it, but I heard about it. Um, he's trying to suspend a student. And uh, he enjoyed a good suspension, the first thing in the morning. Coffee and a suspension. That was his motto. Um, so he's trying to suspend the student, and the student's laughing. And the more he laughs, the more this guy gets upset. And the more he gets upset, the more the student laughs. He finally says, what the heck are you laughing at? He says, a pirate is trying to suspend me <laughs> with a parrot on his shoulder. So sometimes that's just what it takes. You're suspended by a pirate. Um, another story goes, and I wasn't there for it. I don't even think I was at the school at the time, but he told me a story. There was a tall student guy who wasn't doing very well in class. In fact, he never went. Um, he uh, was skipping classes. He was uh, not doing homework, and all kinds of stuff. You know, typical grade A quality student. Anyway, so this VP brought him in and his father. Father was a little gentleman about this big um, with a fedora on his head. Um, so a very ethnic gentleman. And um, the VP was going through everything this guy was doing and this is what he was not doing and, and so on and so on and so on. And the little gentleman just sort of sat there and nodded and nodded and nodded. And the kid was sitting in the chair beside him. Big guy. And so uh, uh, the... Um, the gentleman says to the vice principal, I fix. And he got up, and he went, boom, uh, right across the kid's head, face, everything, laid the kid out totally cold on the floor. And then he turns back to the vice principal, and the little old gentleman with the fedora says, I fix. And he walked out. <laughs> the kid is out cold on the floor. <laughs> Big guy. I love that story. That's so it's perfect. Um, some stories, VPs will tell you. It's like when I, when I was talking with about Mr. Um, Kraft. Uh, uh, not everybody becomes a vice principal. To stay a vice principal, they want to become a principal. And a lot of them do. A lot of them do. And then they move on to superintendent, and they keep on moving up the ladder in the board until they become obsolete, Peter Principal. Or they become directors somewhere else. And uh, that's not something I wanted to do. And I certainly had, I would have a great deal of trouble suspending anybody. I would be the, the, the least suspending vice principal on the planet. Um, we had a principal during 96, 97 in that time frame. That was a really rough year. That was a new conservative government. They were cutting left and right. We had a strike later on in, I believe, early 97, 98. Um, but Mr. Montgomery, Kerry Montgomery, was the, was the principal for a very short period of time, only a couple of years. 
and when he came on board, he was a really, really a nice guy. He had, he was a cowboy. He had he liked certain things he liked to deal with, and other things he liked to not deal with at all. Um, he knew he was near retirement, and uh, so he didn't do very much to rock the boat. Um, but I I spoke with him, and maybe some people wouldn't know this. Um, and I said to Montgomery, that's like as in General Montgomery, and he went, yeah, I'm related to him. And I said, how far back does your family go? Because in the Battle of 1066, when the French Normans invaded England, the Anglo-Saxons, and King William the Conqueror beat King Harold of England, and that was the only time in the history of England that they've ever been invaded and conquered. And that led to a whole culture change and ne everlasting results in in uh, in England and he said yeah my ancestor rode across the channel with William the Conqueror his name was uh, something Montgomery and he was a French knight and uh, because of the success that they had in defeating the English he was given huge swaths of land in England huge and that's where my family is from. So, yeah, it can trace my clan all the way back to 1066. And that's amazing. And he's got the whole family tree to uh, to show for it. Last time I checked, he was in Salt Lake City in Utah. I don't know if he's still there. But he was, again, he was a principal that was very, very good to the arts departments and the music department. And uh, some principals were, some weren't. Um, some principals were very much musically oriented. We had a principal, the late uh, Miss Cowison, who was around uh, 87 to about 89. She was only here for two years. Um, she loved music, and she was a singer. And the first principal that I've ever met that got on board and went on stage and we did a talent show, she was there. She was involved. Um, so we've had, and it went from pro to con. We had principals that looked at the arts departments and music department and went, Pleh. you know, wait for the next principal, wait for the next regeneration. And so I did. And it would go, sometimes the years worked out and sometimes it didn't. But no matter what, you still had to work with the people. And that's something I learned from Mr. Charbonneau. Um... You know how where the music room is in the front of the school. Every when the windows are open, things fly in, things fly out. Sometimes people fly in, sometimes people fly out. Some of you may remember that. I left the room to go to the office, and somebody climbed out the window and then climbed back in, and then I that was just before I got back in, and they went for a smoke. They had climbed out, went for a smoke, came back, jumped back in. I learned about it uh, later on, and and and. and I forget what I did. I think they gave the kid money the next time to go to the mall and get something for me. I don't remember, but it was really funny. The, the windows were used as a, as a loading dock, but every so often something would fly in. And this was a grade 9 class years ago, and a rather large flying something or other. I guess it, was, it could have been a bee, it could have been a wasp, it could have been anything. It was about this big, and it flew in the room. And, of course, you've got grade 9... 14 year old kids and they're all running all the girls are running around oh my god oh my god it's a bee it's a bee and all the guys are looking at each other going what do we do what do we do oh look it's a flying thing um and so anyway it landed on the floor and one young lady um went over and just went thump and her comment back to me was sir it's now a b flat i didn't make that up it's not a dad joke. I didn't make it up. It actually happened. Some of you were there, and you saw it happen. So, don't blame me. Oh, by the way, the shirt I'm wearing, there you go, was a gift. And uh, those of you uh, might know that that's my email. Um, and that's as far as I'll go with that. Um the last thing I, I don't want to go on too much longer but there is one one person that i do i hope you're staying i keep on leaving it to the end um i'm hoping people last uh, to the very end of the videos because there's just as much good content at the end of the videos as they're at the beginning 
and I keep pushing this one off and I'm not going to push it off anymore. When you work with someone for a really long time, uh, I didn't I didn't have too many other music for people, but I did work with, with drama people and, and other people and dance. And, um, and there's one young lady who I believe is still at the school that I put on dozens and dozens of shows and productions and dance recitals and dance showcases and cultural things and and so on and um she had to be without question one of the most competent teachers and most empathetic and most um, nurturing and students responded accordingly, and that's Miss Daniel. Um, Miss Daniel and I, we started working almost right away when she came to the school, and when it came to stage crew stuff or technical stuff or programming, um, she had her end of the, the thing, and I had mine, and the results were usual. Well, you saw the results. If you watched any dance showcases or you watched uh, some of the stuff that the two of us were involved in, they usually came off uh, really, really well, and and uh, not just from a technical standpoint. Um, as a dance choreographer and teacher, um, the students would have run through brick walls for her with justification. Uh, tremendously talented in terms of communicating, empathy, um, uh, understanding where the students were coming from, going beyond the extra mile, um, and this is someone who, having worked with her extensively for I'm on a decade and a half, really, and uh, it's it's an incredible feeling when you're walk when you're going into a really really big deal, a big show, a big whatever, and you've got the knowledge that the person you're working with has their end of the bargain, not only taken care of, but they're 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 one step ahead of you. And towards the end, she was always one or two steps ahead of me, which isn't hard to do. Um, and she maintains contact with a lot of her students, the way I maintain contact with a lot of my students. And um, one of the one of the most um, if, wonderful um, teachers, from a teaching point of view, just as a teacher. There are teachers who are teachers, and then there are teachers who really can get the message across and really get the devotion of the students and really get the students to respond to them um, beyond the students' own expectations. They didn't know they could do it so well, and that's the uh, amazing ability to communicate. You can't be a teacher unless you have empathy and communication skills. And Ms. Daniel has both. And uh, I miss working with her. I congratulate her. I hope everything is still hunky-dory at the school. We've gone through some difficult times with the, with the virus and then with the cutbacks and with the this and with the that and with the government. And, and I don't relish the, the thought of being a teacher in these days. I don't think I could handle it. But back in the day, we went through some, some bumps in, in, the, in the road and uh, um, some of my best memories are some of the uh, uh, dance showcases and programs that we did uh, on stage because it was a job well done. It was a job well done. And we always sort of congratulated each other after, after a show. And that's all it took. That was all. That, that, that was it. We could not talk to each other for half a year because she was busy doing her thing. I was busy doing mine. Um, and then we'd come together and we would instinctively know what was needed to be done and we'd do it. So, Miss Daniel, I thank you on my part for making m my life a little easier because you had, you had everything under control. And me, nothing. Anyway, that's it. it we're on to almost 30 minutes. I'm sorry it's so long. Uh, but yeah, it's good stuff. And if you speak to, if you're watching towards the end of the video, and I thank you for that, um, tell other people to watch and people to have a tendency to watch for 15 minutes and then get bored go figure and stop watching don't do that there's good stuff all the way through and, and just because the video is not 15 minutes long doesn't mean 
it's not that it doesn't got content uh, these are content that's important to me if it's important to me i'm hoping that it will be somewhat reminiscent and important to you anyway stay healthy excuse me stay healthy um um stay safe get vaccinated almost everybody becoming vaccinated which is wonderful um it's really really hot out there uh, don't go outside unless you have to if you have you want to have air conditioning fill up the bathtub with cold water and jump right in all the best we'll see you next time